Okay, so in this part we're going to use the deformation tools and skinning to tools within Advanced Skeleton to prevent stuff like this happening. So, our oh, bad deformation and uh, bad skinning. So the reason for this happening is because mine is its best when we bind joints to a mesh to assign a joint to vertices on the mesh. Um, it does its best job and generally it does a pretty good job. Uh, for example, like when we bend this, so it just bends really nicely there. But it can just kind of cave in on itself a bit. Um, an example, for example, the armpits are always quite a, a tricky one for it to calculate it by itself. Um, generally, you'll get nice deformation in the knee and the legs. So if we just click on this control here, generally it's quite nice, but then you do get the kind of jumper caving in around the hip area and so on. Um, and also the head always needs a bit of work as well, which you can probably see here. So. Um, so let's take a look at the, the cage, so we can just click create, so it's important just to miss out the form 1, we're going to go on to form 2 and create the skin cage. Now what this is going to do is make a bit of a reference geometry underneath, so now that it's finished let's take a look. Um, we could just go into like a bit of an x-ray mode here, uh, maybe not x-ray, but, um, sorry, oh, I've just undone it now, let's do that again, so you can see the, the skin cage underneath here, it actually does a pretty good job of kind of guessing for you, but we can click on these little green controls and just scale them up a bit. So when it, the times where it's going to be going wrong is, for example, if you just click that, so we can probably just make our mesh here actually. Um, on a different layer, let's just add it all to one layer there. I didn't actually assign them there, did I? Just assign selected objects. This is what our skin cage looks like underneath. So all we need to do is just kind of scale these up to match our our body a bit. So let's take a look again. I'm gonna leave it on a template here so I can see that's what I wanted to do. So let's click our thing and we're just gonna scale it up. To match my character roughly. So you can see it now, it's not going to interfere. Or anything, we just don't want it to overlap. You don't even need to worry too much about it fitting perfectly and stuff, anyway. Uh, we could do with maybe making the, the head skin cage a bit bigger. So we don't get any weird issues with the neck and stuff. I believe you can 
No, from left to right. There you go. So you only have to do one side as well, which is the bonus. You check the fingers. So the fingers are always a tricky one. Uh, mine are actually fine here, but you'll often get it where uh, the skin in the cage is overlapping for the fingers, which causes all sorts of little problems. So it's this sort of thing we're looking out for, so just don't want that. And that looks fine. Um, that looks all good to me. Um, so the next thing to do is we select my mesh and turn off the template now. And then we're just going to copy the weights. And now we can hide the skin cage. So I've got, two, I've got curves and a cage there. So now let's just check my arm. Not sure if it works properly then. Okay, so I made a little mistake there. So to make it work, you need to uh, come into your group and actually select all the different parts rather than the actual group node, and then click copy words, and then it should work fine. And we've got a much better bind now. We're not getting any kind of horrible tugging there. And this is pretty much spot on now for posing. So you can now comfortably uh, pose your character um, without worrying about horrible deformation. We've got a slight little issue in there still, but um, in the next step I'll show you how to perfect those weights um, using the paint skin weights tool.